What's up my G's and welcome back to my Dragon Quest journey, a series where I explore the worlds and stories of the Dragon Quest franchise. We're taking a break from the Dragon Quest The Adventures of Daimanga and jumping into the Dragon Quest Your Story movie on Netflix. I really enjoyed watching this movie with my daughter and it made me feel like I was jumping into the world of Dragon Quest myself. This movie takes place in Dragon Quest V and it got me wanting to hurry up and finish Dragon Quest IV so I can go ahead and play Dragon Quest V and experience the game myself. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button down below and don't forget to drop a comment. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I drop one of my videos. And with all that said and done, let's jump right in. The movie starts off with a black screen and Japanese words in pixel. The narrator tells us of a heavenly people who came together against an evil entity named Mimzo. They sealed him behind the gates of the dark world and doing so came at the cost of many lives. If a villain were to return to the world and reopen the gates of the dark world, the only way to stop him would be with a sword imbued with holy power. The Holy Sword must be wielded by the descendant of the Zenithian bloodline, also known as the Heavenly Hero. We move on to a pixel world. It's a throne room, and the king seems to be pacing back and forth. Sancho comes in and tells King Pankras that the baby has been born. Pankras and Sancho head upstairs, and we see Pankras naming the baby boy, Luca. We are told that not too long after Luca was born, Luca's mother was abducted by monsters. We switch over to Luca and Pankras on a boat parked at a port. They have been sailing around the world in search of Mata, Luca's mother. They are talking to Rodrigo, who tells Pankras that he'll stay in touch and that he was looking for the sword. Rodrigo is accompanied by his daughter Nira, who blushes at the sight of Luca. We switch over to Luca talking to a girl named Bianca. Bianca was fighting with some kids for a saber cat that they were bullying. They told her that they can have the cat if they defeated the ghost that up Tatin Towers. Together, Luca and Bianca end up fighting a ghost called the Haunted Housekeeper, who leaves behind the golden orb that Luca takes. The next screen switches over to Bianca and Luca taking the cat from the bullying kids. Together, they name the cat Percy. I love this opening. It's short, simple, and straight to the point. And making this part in Pixel is a great way to portray to the audience that this is still Dragon Quest. Now back to Luca and Pankras. Luca is training with his father, and afterward Pankras goes inside of their house. Luca chases after Percy and runs into a stranger. After speaking to the stranger, Luca heads to go back inside and his father comes out and tells him that it's time to get going. The father and son duo head to Coburg Castle where Luca witnesses Prince Harry being abducted by monsters. Luca runs back to tell his father. We switch over to Pankraz fighting against two beasts wielding axes and eventually Pankraz is able to take out the two beasts, saving Prince Harry. As they are about to leave, an evil bishop named Laja appears laughing. Laja quickly takes Luca and Prince Harry hostage, and the two beasts beat Pankras down while Pankras yells at Luca to wake up. Luca finally awakes to see his father being burned to death by a Kafrizzle spell shot by Laja himself. Laja lets Luca go just to hear him scream at his father's death, and Luca runs to his father who tells Luca that his mother is still alive. We switch over to Luca, already much older, enslaved with Prince Harry. They were being forced to work on Laja's temple. They plan to escape and they succeed. Luca and Prince Harry end up hiding at a doctor's house who gives them food and shelter. The doctor tells them that he is there to spy on Laja's forces and he's working to find a way to defeat him. Luca and Prince Harry head back to Coburg Castle where they part ways. Luca heads back to his old home where he finds a secret room. This is where his father kept his old stuff. He finds an old journal of his father. The journal tells Luca that his mother was of Zenithian blood and was needed to perform a ritual so she must still be alive and he thought that Luca was the heavenly hero who would wield the Zenithian sword to defeat Laja. Sancho shows up in the house and is happy to see that Luca is alive and well and fills him in on the details that might have been left out of the journal and tells Luca that the Zenithian sword is being held by a wealthy nobleman named Rodrigo in the town of Mastro Ferrado. Luca heads off to the town to retrieve the sword and ends up meeting a slime friend and also reuniting with his saber cat Percy. When Luca arrives, he learns that the town is being terrorized by a behemoth named Bjorn and the person to defeat him will get to marry the nobleman's daughter, Nira. Luca just wants a Zenithian sword and visits the nobleman who recognizes Luca and goes to get the sword, but quickly realizes that the sword was stolen by Bjorn. Luca is forced to take on the challenge of defeating Bjorn and alone is defeated and sent back to the town burnt to a crisp. He heads into the tavern where he is reunited with Bianca. Together they go to challenge Bjorn and retrieve the Zenithian sword. But Luca realizes that he can't unsheath the sword. He must not be the heavenly hero. With Bianca and Percy's help, Luca was able to defeat Bjorn. They provided the distraction, and Luca jumped from the top of a cliffside and used the wind spell to damage Bjorn's wing and grabbed onto one of his horns. Bjorn went flying down to the ground, creating a massive dust cloud. 
When the smoke dispersed, Luca stood on Bjorn's nose with his sword directly in front of Bjorn's third eye. He told Bjorn to pledge his loyalty to him or die, and Bjorn looked into Luca's Zenithian eyes and Bjorn's evil eyes turned normal, and he pledged his loyalty to Luca. This whole fight was fun. It kept me wondering, how the heck are they going to take this huge monster down? But from the beginning, I thought the Zenithian sword would be the key, but finding out that Luca wasn't the heavenly hero had me like, how the heck are they going to beat this guy? I liked the way they ended the fight, but I would have liked more of a build up to it though. It kind of ended too quick in my honest opinion. Anyway, back to the movie. After saving the town, Bianca helps Luca propose to Nera, and Nera says yes. Later that night, Luca heads to the tavern and finds Bianca drunk. Luca runs off and runs into an old lady who questions his love for Nera. He says that he is hiding his true feelings and gives him a potion that reveals them. He ends up drinking the potion and realizes that he is actually in love with Bianca. The next day, he calls off his marriage with Nera and professes his love to Bianca who accepts his proposal to marry him. The old lady was there at the proposal and leaves. She reveals to the audience that she was actually Nera in disguise. Luca and Bianca head back to Luca's house where time passes. They end up having a baby boy who they name Alice. One day they are attacked by monsters. They try to fight back and give Alice to Sancho and tell him to take care of him while they fight the monsters off. The monsters end up taking Bianca to their temple and Laja turns Luca into stone. Back at Laja's temple, Laja reveals to Bianca that she is actually of Zenithian blood and shows her that a spell must have been casted on her to hide her yellow eyes. Bianca refuses to help him convince Mata, Luca's mother, to teach her the spell to unseal the portal. She starts shooting Confrizzle spells at him and he turns her into stone as well. Eight years pass by and we see Alice diving into a cave to retrieve a staff from a treasure chest which he uses to free Luca from his stone imprisonment. Alice is also revealed to be able to use a Zenithian sword. Alice was the real heavenly hero. Together Luca and Alice travel to find the Zenith Dragon, who is said to be hiding in a town close to the temple of Laja. They end up at the doctor who helped Luca and Prince Harry before, and after hearing what Luca and Alice were there for, Dr. Agon reveals himself to be the Zenith Dragon. He needs his golden orb to transform back into the dragon and take them to Laja's temple. The same orb retrieved by Luca and Bianca when they were kids. Luca pulls out a piece of the golden orb that was broken in the fight with Laja. The doctor examines it and says that it is a fake and sends Luca to meet with the fairies who are set to grant any wish. Luca has to go through an entrance guarded by robots. Luca reaches the fairies and they give him a wish to be granted. The fairy sends Luca to the past to train his fake golden orb with his younger self. We notice this in the beginning of the movie and it all comes back full circle. With the orb, the doctor is able to transform into a dragon and takes Luca and Alice to the top of Laja's temple. Alice throws the staff at his mother frozen in stone the same way he did to save Luca and they have a family reunion. Luca instantly notices her yellow eyes and Bianca tells Luca what happened. The three fly up towards Mada, Luca's mom, where they have to fight Laja. Laja has finally gained enough power to break Mada's protection spell. Mada is set flying to the ground and passes out. They are surrounded by Laja's minions and the fight begins. Luca starts killing any monster that comes his way and Alice is using the Zenithian sword to tear through the monsters himself. Even dragons the size of the Zenithian dragon. Bianca is holding her own with her fire attacks but they soon realize that there are too many of them. Suddenly a giant pirate ship flies onto the platform and it's Prince Harry and Sancho along with Harry's soldiers as well as Bjorn who carried the ship onto the top of the temple. Ladja quickly grabs Mada and takes her away and Luca gives chase who quickly disperses of the two monsters who easily took his father down. Luca launches an attack at Ladja but is no match for him. Ladja sends him flying all over the temple and quickly overwhelms him. As Ladja is about to hit Luca with a fire attack, he uses a wind spell attack and gains the upper hand and manages to stab Ladja in the stomach who starts pushing back and just as he is about to break free, Alice comes in with his Zenithian sword and stabs Ladja right in the stomach and Ladja starts to burn up. Ladja is only a flying torso with a head and two floating hands who uses Mada to open the gate to the demon world and power starts to surge through him while he praises Mimzo. This fight was my favorite fight of the movie. It looked so crisp and had me sitting up in my seat. My only complaint of the whole movie was that I wish there were more one on one fights and not people just slashing stuff which this fight mostly consisted of. It was still beautiful and really enjoying to watch though. Back to the movie. Ladger starts to disintegrate and tells Luca that he's finished and a giant storm opens up above the temple. 
Alice needs to get close enough to close the gate with his sword, and Bjorn shows up and throws him up towards the storm. Alice throws his sword up to the storm and it starts to change colors, and as Alice is falling back down, everything freezes, and we see this weird tower object piercing through the storm. Everyone is frozen except for Luca. The weird tower thing breaks up and turns into a weird looking humanoid creature who throws the Zenithian sword to the floor. The sword disintegrates. This life form turns off textures and everything turns white. He turns off gravity and everything starts to float. And then he turns off collisions so that Luca's hands go right through Bianca. He then says that he's going to give the processors a break and everything starts to disintegrate. But it all looks digital. Luca is scared and helpless. The life form reveals himself to be a virus inside of the game. Mimzo starts to explain that long ago a game called Dragon Quest came out and it was wildly successful. Years have passed and a new virtual reality version of the game was released and Luca was actually stuck inside that game as a player. Even though it felt like a lifetime, the game was only being played for a few hours. The virus says that his creator hates the players and he's merely a product of a genius hacker. Mimzo sends Luca back into the real world. We switch over to the player starting the game up and choosing a name. We switch back over to Mimzo trying to send Luca back into the real world and Luca is fighting back while gaining all of his real world memories. Suddenly the slime jumps in between Luca and Mimzo and reveals himself to be an antivirus program. He turns into a sword that is actually a vaccine to destroy the virus. With that sword, Luca defeats Mimzo and after defeating Mimzo, Luca returns to the game where he is greeted by Bianca and Alice and everyone else. Luca realizes that when they return home, this game will be over and he will have to return back to the real world. But he's okay with it because it's just like finishing a Dragon Quest game. I love the ending to this movie. I know lots of people didn't like it, but I thought it was great. The quick turn and reveal that this was all a game was pretty cool. And the way they revealed it was even better. Having a villain destroy the world in an instant while the main character sat there watching helplessly was great to see in my opinion. Then ending it with Luca being okay with everything because he actually got what he went in there for, which was the realest experience you can get in the game. The movie was super fun to watch, and me and my daughter really enjoyed it. The animation is beautiful, and the music did a good job of pulling us in and letting us know that things are about to go down. The whole movie just looked really crisp and clear, and the story was really enjoyable. I felt like I was actually playing the games again. It had its funny moments, and it even had a love story. The movie did a great job starting us off with a backstory and giving us little bits of information. Then they filled in more details as the movie continued that pieced those little bits of information together, giving us a little aha moment. I would definitely watch this movie over and over with my daughter instead of watching Frozen a thousand times. I'm excited to finish Dragon Quest 4 and jump right into Dragon Quest 5 now, and that's thanks to this movie. I'm actually glad I watched the movie before I played the game. I know it was meant to be the other way around, but I feel like that hasn't been ruined. The next video will be my review of the Dragon Quest 4, the start of the Zenithian trilogy. And I hope you guys will continue to join me on my journey into the worlds and stories of the Dragon Quest franchise. I'll see you next time with the next Dragon Quest video. Peace out my G's.